I'm your host, Jack Carnival, and here with me is special this is special guest, Jeremy Armstrong, who is a political analyst. Jeremy, thank you for being here. Thank you for thank you, Jack, for having me. It's my personal pleasure to be here. So Jeremy, first things first, what do you feel about Trump and the way he has handled immigration and building a wall and all, along the lines of that? Uh, personally, I feel like the American citizen should always come first, no matter the situation. I feel like we should be willing to help other countries and those people, but our safety must come before those of immigrants. What are people in Syria trying to escape that very war-torn country? Uh, should they just stay there in danger? Uh, no, I don't believe that they should stay there in danger, but the reason for the ban is that we do not want the war coming to the United States, and we do not want uh, to have that those issues come to the United States, like I said. Yeah. So it's really there just to protect us, and no, we're not letting them out to dry. We are just making sure that it is safe for them to come. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't just let them, or not let them, into the United States. They are living in terrible war-torn war -torn country that's extremely poor and dirty, rough areas and communities, like, I mean, we should, there should be some kind of leeway, right? Um, I agree. They definitely do deserve, like, better opportunities and uh, more safety, but until we can prove that they are coming here and they're looking to not just better their lives, but also they offer something, like, to help out our country as a whole, I don't think we should let them in because we are not sure if they are coming here to injure or kill American citizens. We have to make sure that they're coming in for the right reasons. And I also don't understand whatever happened to the, uh, if it's broken, you should why run away and fix, like instead of trying to fix it. I feel like we should almost see if they can't fix it. And I understand that some of them are leaving due to the fact that they see no hope in these countries but we just have to make sure that they're safe to enter the country. But don't, don't you feel that they're leaving their countries because their nation is beyond repair in their lifetime and they, they want to go out and seek new opportunities and live the life that they want to live and not just live in terrible yeah. communities where yeah. they can't do anything, can't do much? I mean, I definitely understand that, but it's also not the job of the United States to fix something every time a nation is in shambles. Sometimes they're going to have to handle it on their own. Now, Jeremy, I'm going to read a list. I'm going to read the list of nations that are involved in this immigration ban. Uh, and can you just tell me what they all have in common? Like Syria, Iraq, Iran, Yemen, Somalia, Sudan, and Libya. What, what, what do all these countries have in common? All of those countries are predominantly Muslim countries. But don't you feel that, don't you find it weird that Donald Trump is refusing to call it a Muslim ban, but with all these Muslim, dominant Muslim countries being, like, on this executive order? Um, I don't, personally, I do not find it weird. Um, yes, those countries are predominantly Muslim, but I do not find it to be a Muslim ban. Those countries are one of, like, they're certainly hotbeds for terrorist activity. The U.S. government actually denied more than 500 Syrian refugee applicants uh, since 2011 because the ap applicants had known or suspected terroristic ties. And according to Homeland Security, that's who that came from. Uh, White House officials said that the seven countries that are banned uh, have like been targeted by an executive order uh, because they were deemed to be countries of concern. So that means that even, and this is from the past uh, presidency. This is not from Trump, this is from President Obama. And that is very overlooked in the news that even President Obama, who was seemingly more for immigration, even said that those countries were hotbeds for terrorists, terroristic activities. The people that are seeking refuge from these from these dangerous countries, they are in should be allowed into this country, don't you think? Like, I mean, 
Uh, they will eventually be allowed into the country, but they just need to go through the process of vetting to make sure that they are coming here, like I said earlier, for the right reasons. They aren't coming to harm the American citizen. They are coming to better their lives and not injure our individuals. So these countries that you know are war, they're very dangerous, and, and so if we're not going to let these people in, should we should we send in troops to fix it, like to fix these problems and to better these, to like make the economy stable and reduce the crime and war and stuff like that? Um, Donald Trump has talked about uh, sending in troops and things of that nature to protect the individuals who are looking for refuge in the United States and who are trying to get out of uh, the situation they're in. I'm assuming he will eventually come up with a zone uh, that is highly protected by U.S. troops to make sure that they are not in danger while they are going through the process to enter the United States. Now, on the other side of immigration about building a wall and the illegal aliens that are coming in from Mexico, do you believe that building a wall, like, do you believe in building a wall and do you believe what kind of an effect building a wall would have? Um, I'm not sure if I necessarily believe that the wall is uh, the best route that we could take um, because, one, I know how costly that will be, but I also think that we do need some increased border security, whether that's in the form of, you know, the wall or increased troops on the border, like National Guard, I think that's very crucial. Cool. If if Trump got his wall built, would it it would stretch a total of uh, almost two thousand miles, costing roughly ten to twelve billion dollars. How can that be justified for a president who doesn't want to raise taxes if if it would cost the American citizens so much money to accomplish building a wall? Uh, yeah, I don't. Like I said, I don't necessarily believe that the wall is in, like, needed. I think, obviously, it would help. It would be a deterring factor. I do think uh, increased border security and patrol would be, obviously, much more cost efficient yeah. and just as useful. But uh, President Trump has talked about maybe Mexico paying for the wall. So if that could be accomplished and Mexico paid for the wall, or at least a significant portion of it, then in that case, I would say the wall should be built. I'm not going to pay for that wall. I believe the former Mexican president summed up that one for us in that clip. To me, it seems as if Donald Trump is trying to stop immigration into this country. Um, I would have to disagree with that. I believe uh, President Trump is just trying to protect the American people and limit illegal immigration coming into the country. America was founded on immigration. To limit something like immigration is unconstitutionally and unconstitutional and downright wrong. As Americans, it is our duty to help those in need. Right? We get involved in so many other countries. Why can't they just come in? Um, like I said, I don't believe President Trump is banning immigration. I believe he's just implementing the system to make sure that everyone who enters the country is safe and is not looking to harm American citizens. And he's not looking to keep everyone out. He's just looking for them to come in the proper way. I agree that there should be a system to make sure that they don't have any intentions to injure American citizens. But we shouldn't. We shouldn't just make them stay in a war-torn, ridden nation while they wait uh, to see if they are led into the United States or not, right? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you there, Jack. I think um, if they're doing everything they can and they're going about it the right way, then we should guarantee them at least some safety while they wait for the confirmation that they can come in. So I'm pretty sure Trump is looking at doing that. I'm glad you agree with me on that point. Yeah, of course, Jack. And um, I, I mean, I know it's probably a bit of a surprise, but uh, not all Trump supporters are as crazy as you would think. All right. Well, I'm going to have to take take a quick commercial break. I'm feeling quite sick due to the fact that I just 
Democrat just agreed with a Republican on national TV. All right, we're back, and I'm feeling much better, although I would not recommend getting a close-up of the trash can over there. Yeah, it uh, certainly was a weird time. Can't uh, actually remember the last time I agreed with a liberal or something. All right, let's get back to the discussion. For those of you who are just joining us on the hardball, on hardball, I am discussing immigration with the special guest, Jeremy Armstrong. Now, Jeremy, what do you think the, the standard should be for letting immigrants stay in the United, stay in the United States? Um, as much as you probably will disagree, uh, I'm not against immigration as much as you may think. Um, when it is done the proper way, I think that's how it has to be done, and I'm and I know for a fact that's also how the president feels, that we are for immigration. When it's done the right way, we know they're coming for the right reasons. If they follow the laws and they become a legal American citizen, then they deserve every single right that an American citizen does. There's nothing, there's no benefits that they should not receive. If they become legal, then they're citizens. What about those who are receiving benefits that are not technically legal. Um, I believe that all funding that they receive should just be uh, should be cut. I'm sure President Trump will get around to that as well. Um, I think about all the veterans who are treated very poorly and they don't receive as much as they should from this country and I believe that they should be considered more important than an illegal alien who has not really contribute, contributed much. I do, uh, I do agree with you that Veterans should be treated better for their sacrifices they have made for this, for our country. But that doesn't take away from what citizens and individuals deserve. Uh, yeah, I I have to agree with you there. But I know that people who fight and protect our rights here in the United States should be one of our priorities, and that they should be treated very well. I agree, but we must make sure that all needs are taken care of, right? Again, I'd have to agree with you there because I do believe that it is our responsibility to take care of the needs of our citizens. President Trump is going to take care of the needs of the citizens, but I do not feel that we need to take care of the needs of illegal immigrants. I, th I think it's rather clear that President Trump does not care about the needs of immigrants coming into this country and the illegal immigrants coming from Mexico. Um, I'd have to disagree. I think President Trump does care about immigrants if they come in the proper way. Yes, if they come in the proper way, he's going to make sure that they are treated well, they get the rights they deserve. But like I said, if they come in as an illegal immigrant, he's really not, or ha he doesn't really have to make sure that they get every right because they came in illegally and that they're truly not an American citizen. All right, so I understand where you're coming from. Now, I think we should do a recap of what we have discussed and what and seeing what are what the best options are. As far as the wall along the border, do you say it's do you think it's unnecessary to build a wall? Um, I'd say it probably is unnecessary to build a wall. I think that there are other means and ways to protect the border. Like I stated earlier, increased border patrol with uh, we could use the National Guard to do that. But the wall would definitely be useful, but I don't feel like it's necessary for us to pay for it. If President Trump is able to convince the Mexican government to pay for it, then I say yes, the wall should be built. But if not, I would say that is extra and does not need to be done. Well, I'm going to say that it's highly unlikely, but all options just lead to tax increases. As as far as the ban on predominantly Muslim nations, what do you believe should be done regarding that? Um, I believe President Trump is doing what he must to protect the American people. I believe the individuals from those nations looking to come into the United States must be extremely vetted to make sure that they're safe and they're not looking to commit any terroristic acts or cause harm to any American citizens. I believe we must protect those people if we're going to hold them in their country for an extended period of time before we let them come into the United States. 
Um, I certainly agree with you there, and I'm sure President Trump will do that. Well, I believe that is a wrap. And thank you, Jeremy, for coming to the show. I feel as we had a very good discussion on, on these very important global issues. Thank you for tuning into into Hardball. See you all tomorrow.